Hello. Remember us? We uh, used to do videos and stuff about our adoption. <laughs> well, we're back. And we're going to do just, we've been so busy, and this has kind of been low on our priority list to do update videos. Um, but we do want to give you guys a kind of a quick update <coughs> on where we are. Um, the first thing is we had our first transfer January 25th of 2018 and found out February 6th it was unsuccessful. And then we're devastated because we didn't know when we would be able to do the second transfer um, because of raising money. And I, Yeah, I thought it was going to be like <coughs> months. six months before we could even sniff thinking about doing it. And... But... Um, God was just like, oh, you want some money? Here, have some yeah. money. So um, there were just some really amazing ways that he provided for us. And it's we've just been saying kind of all along that it's just more confirmation that this is what we're supposed to be doing. And so it was just really amazing to see how the funds just came in. Um, I did sold some artwork and did some painting parties because I have a small painting party business. And um, people had donated, even though we didn't ask for it. And then um, we had another big garage sale. And just kind of all these different things. And then the money was just there all of a sudden. Yeah, it was crazy to like look back and see like a little bit here, a little bit there. And then it added up to the amount we needed. Yeah. So, so um, let's see. I guess in April I went for my um, pre-transfer consultation stuff. And had to do a hysteroscopy and some blood work. And um, the doctor found some inflamed blood vessels in my uterus. And so she was like, it's really not a big deal, but we'll just do some antibiotics and knock that out real quick. Um, and that was a huge hassle because the antibiotics, like you couldn't, like you couldn't eat dairy within X amount weird. of time. Yeah. And so like I had to time my vitamins and prenatal and food all around the um, the antibiotics and stuff was really frustrating, but if it did what it was supposed to do, then it's worth it. Yeah. Um, and then last week, last two Tuesday, yeah, um, I went in for my when we went in, when I went in for my consultation, the doctor was like, "Hey, I'm cool with you going ahead with um, next month," and um, so we moved forward with that. And she was really, really sweet. Like we've just been, we love our clinic. Yeah. Um, and so the doctor was just really nice and she was very compassionate and she's like, I know that this is really hard to walk through this again, um, but the last time doesn't have any bearing on this time. And um, so she went ahead and recommended that we transferred our remaining two embryos because they were graded just a little bit lower than our other ones, um, which again doesn't mean anything necessarily. Um, the really poorly graded embryos are often end up with I say often, I don't know often, but they do end up as um, living, breathing children, and highly graded ones don't always. So yeah. we take grading lightly. Um, and then, so blah, 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 last Tuesday, I went in for my um, lining check. So I started my estrogen tablets, um, which I think is supposed to like build your lining, and then uh, after your 12 day, 12, 13 to 15 days, you go in and have your lining checked um, via sonogram and they let me come in a day early. So I went in on um, after 12 days and they said that everything looks good. I was a little bit freaked out because um, the first time the tech took the measurement of the lining because they want it to be within 7 to 15 millimeters thick and like three layers of, I don't know, they said three layers or something. And you can see it on the sonogram, it's really cool. Um, but she measured it and it was like almost eight. So it was within the range that they require, but it wasn't within the range that they like, um, which is like eight or above. And so I was like really freaked out because I had been doing all this like natural stuff in addition to the, um, medication to try to get my lining really nice and thick. And I had hoped that it was going to be thicker than last time just so that I could kind of go in with a different mindset. Like, okay, this is different. Um. But then she remeasured it and she's like, oh, no problem, you're way over the... And so it was just like, I mean, she she kept going until she got a really good measurement. Yeah. And so it was like, no big deal, but it freaked me out for like two minutes. Um, <clears throat> so then the doctor said, uh, so they take blood work as well and they make sure you haven't ovulated yet. And every doctor's different, so 
don't take our protocol as like, oh, my doctor's doing it differently. This is so weird. So it seems like everybody that I know who's done this, like their protocol has been different. Um, so we started the progesterone injections four days ago, five days ago, yep. last Wednesday. And um, I was really, we were both actually really apprehensive about it. Yeah, I'm involved in those. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because they're really painful, and I don't know if we mentioned this last time, but I actually last go around, I developed an allergic reaction about 10 days after taking them, and it was almost like hives, like but it was like mosquito bites, so it was like these yeah. giant welts like all around the injection sites, and they were itchy and red, um, and so not only that, um, but they really started to hurt. The first week, it was like not a big deal at all, um, and then... After that, like, they really started to hurt. So we were both really apprehensive about that because Tim didn't want to hurt me. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun for her. It's not fun for me. Um, and so we tried something different this time. Instead of doing uh, a heating pad before, um, we've been doing an ice pack. And I honestly don't know if that's been helping. It's still too early to tell. Um, they hurt worse than they did at this point last time. But they don't hurt as badly as they did towards the end of last time. So, I The don't jury know. is still out. It's we will still, let you know. Yeah, the jury is still out. Um, yeah, so we're a little bit still worried that um, I may react to this new... So they switched the oil. They said you're not allergic to the progesterone, you're allergic to the oil that the progesterone is in. So I was on ethyl oleate oil last time, and then they switched me to the sesame oil, but we, I wasn't on it. I was like... Four days. Yeah, it wasn't long enough days. last time to know whether or not there was a reaction. <clears throat> so, and like, so my back was still hurting, like, however long it's been, 20 weeks, 15 weeks later, yeah, 16 time. weeks later. Um, so I could still feel the injection sites, like if I run, like if I'm walking, it's not a big deal. If I bump them, if I touch them, some days they're more sensitive than others. Um, and then if I run, <clears throat> I can tell them, like, tell where the injections were. Um, and so that made me really nervous, too. Just that, like, I, I obviously haven't completely healed from the last ones, and so I'm like, okay, well, it's going to just hurt worse this time. Um, and then I did get one red bump on my back the first, after the first time, the injection this time, and it didn't itch, and so... We're wondering whether it was freezer burn or something else. Yeah, maybe that, the ice pack yeah. burned me or something. Um, so we'll we'll see about that. They The doctor did say start taking Zyrtec every day, which hopefully will block like an antihistamine and it'll block any of the allergic reactions. So shots are no fun, but um, necessity though. If it's worth, if it works, then it's worth it. Yeah. Um, if I do develop a reaction, the doctor, the nurse I talked to said that they have an easy plan, like way to like switch me to a different type of progesterone. So it's like not a big deal, but it's just more no. expensive yeah. to do it. So we're hoping not to have to do that. Um, so here we sit on we sit. Sunday night and June in 10th. less than two days we will be in the waiting room. Yep, less than 48 hours. Um, so today it's Sunday night and on Tuesday morning our appointment is at 12.15. 12 um, and so we have to be there about 11, 11.15 to kind of go through the check-in and protocols and um, you have to have a full bladder, and when you do the transfer, and so like you have to like drink all this water within an hour and fifteen minutes, and so there's just like all this process. So rather than pulling over on the side of the like in a gas station to do all this stuff, um, we just try to get to the clinic early. Yeah, we got which the whole day blocked off. Probably and... TMI, but there you go. Yeah. Um, so we are hopeful and nervous. Yep. Yeah. And all of the things. Yep. It's just, it's very difficult because last time, you know, we talked with our doctor and he said everything went perfectly and it didn't work and there's no explanation. And so, you know, we're walking through pretty much the same thing and... The dog is playing with the carrot. Oh, yeah, I guess it's playing with a carrot. But, so we're walking through the same thing and, and trusting that... For a different His will will outcome. be done. Yeah. We're, so. We are, um, I had a train of thought. And I, oh, 
One thing that I think our doctor mentioned, um, I didn't ask her for details on this, but I think she mentioned it in our post-transfer consultation last time, was that if the embryos don't implant, then they last about two days, a couple of days. Um, and so my mindset kind of going in this time is that I'm, like last time I didn't want to consider myself pregnant until we had a pregnancy test that confirmed it, um, just because I didn't want to celebrate too early. But this time I've decided that my mindset is going to be I am, as soon as we're, they're transferred, I'm going to be pregnant. And even if these don't implant, these are still my children and I still get to have them with me for two days. Yep. So um, we're going to celebrate that for sure. Um, another thing this time is that we have... Um, I have tried to memorize a lot of new scriptures and I will hopefully share those with you at some point, but I'm really tired and we're trying to do this video really fast. Yeah. Um, but just to keep my mindset um, on God's truth, which um, I think it's really people we want to say, oh, you know, God promised good to me, which means that like, that's gotta be that I get to have a baby. Or like the idea of like claiming a promise and it's like, you know, you could take a verse out of context and claim God's promise to Sarah that she was going to have Yeah, a there's a lot of verses that promise babies to people in the Bible and unfortunately none of them are really for us right now. They were to specific people at specific times and, but we do have other promises in the Bible where God says that to them that love him, he works all things together for good. And at times we don't understand that, but we that is a truth that's applied to all believers at all times, even when we can't understand it. So we are gonna hold on to things like that, that we know, that we know, that we know, <coughs> rather than things that, that God just doesn't promise us. So yeah. we are prayerful, we, we are praying for success and we're holding it with open hands and and hope that God would, would grant that to us. So, yeah. uh, One of the verses that I really like, just real quick, is uh, Lamentations 3. And it's like towards the end of the chapter. Um, but it talks about his, uh, his mercies are new every morning and his loving kindness never fails. But then way down at the end of the chapter, it also says something along the lines of um, if he causes grief, then he will also provide the mercy and compassion that you need. Um, and so it's not that these hard things are happening outside of the control of God. It is that they are for us to um, help us to grow and love him more and to glorify him in some way. And so um, we are hopeful in that even when, even if we find out that the transfer doesn't, is unsuccessful, um, God it will, is still good. Absolutely. And so... That's where we are. Yep. So, so we're excited and hopeful, and um, we'll do another update soon. Yep. Unless you have something else to add. I think that's it. Just please be praying for us if you see this, and uh, yeah, we'll let you know. Bye. Okay. Bye.